For a little while now, I've been really interested in CNC routers. It's a computer numerical control, basically a XYZ axis with a trim router mounted on it that you can use to cut a three-dimensional shape out of a block of material. I've never used one before, but the idea of being able to cut complex, repeatable geometry got me thinking of all kinds of cool projects that I could use one for. My name is John, you're watching Apprentice Marks, and in this video, I'm gonna assemble a CNC Labs desktop CNC router. Let's get started. Behold all of the bits and pieces that comprise the CNC Labs Mill One V2. Now, there is a second box. It's a flat pack box. It's got some steel plate, some uh, MDF with a bunch of holes cut in it, uh, a little bit of acrylic plastic, things like that, big flat pieces. We should have everything here that we need to get started on assembly. Let's get to it. The instructions don't say to add nuts to the back of the bolts, but moving on through the instructions, I'm using these things and, and the bolts keep falling out. I'm gonna make the executive decision to go ahead and add nuts to these lead screw holding things because uh, they're a pain in the ass to work with otherwise. Hopefully it doesn't bite me later. These little screws are really finicky. I'm having a hard time getting them to line up. That is one motor assembly complete and the 3D print sleeve goes over the aluminum. Okay, I've run into a bit of a problem here. This is one of the lead screws that uh, will drive the gantry, and it has to be attached to the axle of this stepper motor. Um, I've been through all my stuff a couple of times, and I can't find anything that looks like what I'm seeing in the diagram, so I, I think I'm stuck. I'm gonna have to reach out to CNC and see if I can get the uh, missing pieces before I can continue. Okay, today is tomorrow. I've got the parts that I need and a hot cup of coffee. Let's continue. So this is the piece that I was missing yesterday. The idea here is that we need to adapt the shaft of the stepper motor that's actually gonna drive the axis and to this threaded rod here that the axis rides on. All right, we've successfully assembled the X, Y, and Z gantries and now it's time to attach them to the frame. I gotta tell you, I'm really impressed with the design of this end cap piece. Not only does it thread into this aluminum rod, it also threads into the MDF side of the machine and the nuts sit very nicely into this recess here so that they don't spin when you try and tighten up the uh, bolts from the other side. It's a really well designed piece. Okay, we are attaching the assemblies. There are these little metal angle brackets that go in all the corners. Mmm, shitty Canadian coffee. Okay, the physical aspect of the build is finished and it's on to the electronics. The electronics for the system are primarily comprised of a stock Arduino with a CNC controller shield on top. So this here's a motor driver. This is what's gonna turn signals from the CNC shield into PWM signals that will drive our stepper motors. They're gonna get kind of warm because they're turning the stepper motors on and off really quickly. So we need to add heat sink to each of these. It's time for the moment of truth. The build is done. Let's see if we can get it to cut something. Every time I turn the machine on, the Z-axis starts falling. It's not holding at zero. Ah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of research. In my rush to lay everything out all pretty on my knurling board, I didn't realize that these parts that I thought were spares were actually a part of a separate modification that came with my Mill One kit. This is an anti-backlash kit. This is a stock standard uh, nut and lead screw that ships with the Mill One. You hear that vibrating? That's no good. And here's one that has the anti-backlash kit installed. You see, there's the normal nut, but then there's a secondary nut. Whenever one nut spins, the other is forced to spin. And then you put a spring between the two that's pushing these guys apart. 
and that takes up any slack in between the threads on the lead screw and the threads in the nut, and that eliminates the backlash. Okay, after much fuckery and with the help of every curse word in the book, I finally got the anti-backlash nuts installed. Let's give the thing a run and see if they help. If you'll recall the last time we did this, the router took a dive down the Z-axis. Let's see what happens now. The first operation we're gonna try and perform is a shallow pocketing cut that makes sure that the work surface is level and is square to the cutting head. Broadly speaking, there are two types of cuts that you can make on a mill like this. The first is called 2D cam. It's the simpler of the two, and it's basic engravings and plaques like this. The second is called 3D cam. That's complex 3D parts, similar to what you might be able to produce on a proper milling machine or on a 3D printer. Those are out of the scope of this video, frankly, out of the scope of my abilities. This is BCNC. This is the control software uh, for the mill. It's an open source piece of software, and you can see that I've got the words apprentice marks set up in a project here. Let's give them a cut, see how they turn out. It's time for the review. Uh, I think that there's probably three things that you want to review on any CNC machine. The first one is going to be the kit and assembly, the sort of instruction manual stuff. The next one's going to be operation and usability, so how easy is it to actually get to do something. And the third one, of course, is going to be price point. Everyone's got a different one, and it depends sort of on what you can afford. For kit and assembly, I'm going to give the CNC Mill One three rage-inducing IKEA assembly booklets out of a possible five. I gotta be honest, this thing could use some work. I was missing pieces, the instructions were unclear at points. Um, if you're familiar with hand tools and willing to do a little bit of tinkering, you can easily figure it out, but it's gonna be a difficult day. In terms of usability and usefulness, I'm gonna give the Mill One four golden screwdrivers out of five. Once you get over the hump and figure out how to use the open source software, I recommend BCNC by the way, look that up on GitHub. This thing's actually really easy to use. I was able to do basic 2D cam operations within my first couple hours of tinkering with it. 3D cam's a little more difficult. I haven't quite mastered uh, the stuff in Fusion 360 to make that work yet, but it's on my to-do list. And on price point, I'm gonna give this thing five big old bags of money out of five. The price point really isn't that bad. I mean, I paid more for my table saw than I did for this thing. I, in fact, I think I can say that I have a few of the tools in my shop and I bought those used. So really, if you don't mind tinkering around and playing with the thing, I'd say the price point is right where it needs to be for a beginner hobbyist level machine. Now, hobbyist level, I think that's a really important word in the discussion about the Mill One. This is not a production machine. I absolutely would not use this if I were going to try and run a business on the back of it, an Etsy store or a sign making company or something like that. This is a hobbyist machine. It takes a lot of tinkering and it's gonna require a little bit of TLC to keep it running cleanly. I've already done a few little upgrades and there's a Facebook group where a bunch of people are doing more upgrades and, and changes to the machine to make it run a little more cleaner, a little better, um, you know, a little more reliably. There's room for improvement here, but I see the mill one as a beginner's kit. If you're the type of person that loves to screw around with bits and bobs and parts and make stuff work, it is a perfect fit for you. If you're the type of person, however, who needs something that's gonna work reliably out of the box for, you know, 22 hours a day, this is not the right machine for you. All that said, I think the CNC Mill One is a great little machine. I would absolutely encourage anybody who's interested in learning about CNC to check it out. Um, one thing that I liked about it was that the kit form really allowed you to get a real good feeling for how a CNC machine works. I mean, it can't be any more basic than the Mill One, but you get to put together all the parts yourself and see how they interact and understand where the limitations of the machine are. And frankly, I think that's gonna help if I ever decide to move up to a bigger, better, more expensive machine in the future. Thanks very much for watching. I've been John. This has been Apprentice Marks. If you want to see what I'm up to between videos, of course, you can follow me at Apprentice Marks over on Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to see the next video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Cheers. I'm out.